Hey guys, welcome back. We are doing the posing for the quarter front and the side view in this video right here. So um, let's get started right away. We've already positioned our reference. We've positioned uh, the different places where we're gonna have our keyframes uh, with the markers over here on the timeline. So quarter front view is going to be at frame 20, as we can see here. Um, so uh, if ever you want to uh, see a little bit better your ref, you can always show up the layer properties for your transparency here. You may want to use the slider over here to turn up the transparency or turn it down depending on uh, what you want to have over here. I find that 50% is uh, pretty much good for seeing both at the same time. So we'll just leave it at 50 and start posing our character. Um, so when we're posing a character for a 360, it's really important to keep in mind that we could always transition from this pose to anything else. And uh, even the stuff that we don't see, like when we swap over to the side view, uh, we want to make sure that it's going to transition smoothly back into any of the other poses, or at least as much as possible. So. Um, in order to do that, let's start right away with one of the most complex pieces, uh, creating the face. Uh, so over here, I've got the eyes of my character. I'm just going to go ahead, move up in the hierarchy up until I select the entire face here. Um, so I have the full face right now. We can go and check it inside of our entire structure as well. So we have the face peg here. I can start offsetting that to begin with. So I'm going to offset it. I want to try and move the larger aspects of the character before I start moving little details around. So I can try to match up, uh, let's say the eyes here by bringing it over onto this side. Right now this eye is practically exactly where it should be. Um, we're gonna need to offset just a little bit. The pupil, the eyebrows are looking good as well. So we are okay with that. Now that we've positioned the face peg, we can go down uh, into little details, um, such as positioning the eyebrows, for instance. Usually anything that can be positioned with uh, the peg, such as this one here, I'll use that before I start deforming. So I'm going to just scale down the eyebrow and move it down slightly over here. We may want to slightly scale it. And I've got the hair right here. I can, again, start with the top peg that controls the hierarchy. I don't need to have values on all three pieces of the hair when I can move all three at the same time. So I'm going to bring those over here. Maybe I want to stretch that very slightly. This one is a little more to the front. So sometimes it's not gonna be exactly the same thing. As we can see here, there's the little line that's changed. Um, so you want to try to keep it as close as possible. Um, you'll realize very often when you create a 360, at times um, you'll have to make compromises for certain things where, uh, for instance, you'll have uh, this line here, which is very close to what you have. And you kind of have to ask yourself, is it worth it for me to change the system and redo it from scratch entirely? Or uh, is it still close enough? Um, and this is also something, of course, if you're working in production that you can discuss with uh, the design team or uh, the producer. All right, so let's grab our nose here. Uh, the nose is not attached to anything else, so I can move that over to the side. And we're pretty much spot on for this one as well. I don't want to scale it too much. And perhaps do a slight skew over on this side. And I'm going to do the same with the mouth here. I'm going to bring that over. Now for the mouth, we'll probably have to do a bit of a change. I can scale it down, but I don't want to do it too much. You don't want your lines to thin out 
too much either. And I'm going to finally go and select the mouth here and position the deformation right here. And bring that line over here, but it doesn't look like we see it. Um, so what we could do at this point, uh, we don't necessarily want to just throw it outside of the face because of course those keyframes that we're setting down are going to be interpolated. So we want to actually have uh, this line kind of remain consistent throughout the rotation of the face. So I could maybe reduce it a little bit, kind of um, oops, turn it over here and perhaps even have it disappear behind the mouth. We can always adjust a little bit later on uh, if need be. I could have it disappear entirely using a drawing and then adjust the exposure of that drawing as well. Um, so sometimes you have to test out these things to see just how well they're going to work. I'm going to adjust the lips. I'm going to adjust the lip a little bit here and this little piece as well. I believe I have a deformer set up for this one. I know we haven't set up the mouth yet, but you guys can add deformation to these different pieces here if need be, and we can always come and readjust those at a later time. And that's about good. Now we want to change that eye a little bit. It's looking uh, kind of crooked and also the pupil is too big for the angle so we can reduce that and modify it very slightly. We don't need to scale it too much because part of it is just being covered up by the eye here. Um, so for this one again I can select the entire shape of the eye Kind of scale it down a little bit. I'll move it to the side. As for the shape, we can readjust that using the deformation. So we'll be able to bring that down a little. We can see that the shape is not exactly the same. So we can always go and adjust very slightly using the peg to reduce the size of that line and have it follow the design as closely as possible. Now, if I take the deformer for the eye, I'm going to go and reposition that one as well. Gonna make sure that it follows the curve of the eye nice and smooth. And there we have it. All right, so that's pretty close. Now, if we look at the head, it's actually losing a little bit of volume here. Um, so this happens, we can uh, go ahead and make that a little bit smaller to follow the model. We'll do the same thing for the head by clicking on the head here. I'm going to reduce the size very slightly. Again, I'm now in conflict with what we have over on this side. So I can use the deformation to adjust this part here and follow the curvature of the top of the head as well. We don't want those hairs to be floating. So let's just make sure that these connect properly. And of course I have the jaw as well that I need to line up with the head. So we'll do that just now. And then we can do the same thing with the hair right here. We can move those a little bit and then adjust using the deformation. So especially when it comes to positioning, I like to do it with the peg instead of the deformer. So you don't want to take all three points and bring those over to the other side because then you're kind of losing uh, your pivot point behind. So let's go ahead and take this one, position that, and rearrange a few of the lines here. We'll do the same thing over on this side, 
position. And this one is pretty much spot on. Maybe just a little bit of movement, but it's really detailed work. Um, and this one as well. Positioning over here. Now the ears are a little bit tricky. Um, we can move those around again as a bulk uh, piece. So we'll position that, rotate it a little bit, perhaps move it a little bit more. I'll try to align those two pieces together. And there we go. So now we can use that, rearrange a little bit the curve of the ear. We'll have this one over here. It kind of becomes a little bit lower. We don't want to lose too much volume. We've only applied a curve uh, for this one. So if you needed to have a new drawing to match uh, this one specifically, you could do that at this point. I don't think I'll, uh, I'll mine too much for the design. And we'll take this one, perhaps move the piece a little bit more before we start changing the different lines. And we'll have that showing all the way up to this point here. And I can actually bring that in, reduce its size a little bit. Again, we don't want to lose too much volume inside of the line. And this part is still very much hidden in the back. So you don't want, again, to make it super small and bring it over there because at some point, this part is going to start showing up. And if we see it kind of growing, uh, it's gonna look weird. So uh, we actually want it to stay in the full size about where it should be in the back. And I'm going to just very slightly hide that behind the ear, just like so. So that's pretty close to what we want. Now we can do the other ear. So we're doing the full thing for now. Um, for the side view, I'm probably gonna have you guys um, do it by yourselves and then we can review a little bit in the next video uh, just how it's going to look. So this one is a little bit simpler. We actually almost have the exact same thing over on this side. I'm just positioning it real quick adding in some keyframes on there. And I think that about looks good for the head. So let's turn off our drawing here and see how this is going to look if I interpolate it. As I actually see the drawing now, I can see there's a little lump here which doesn't really look good. Um, and I'm not supposed to have that lump so I can actually go and fix that up to make sure that the trajectory of this line is much nicer. Don't want to have one here either. So sometimes you'll have to make slight adjustments like so. And now if we want to test it out, uh, first thing I recommend that you do, right now we've just done the head, um, but definitely one thing you should do is set a keyframe down on every frame because right now only the ones that uh, I've moved have keyframed information on them. So I'm going to select my collapsed timeline over here on the frame of my character and press F6 to keyframe down everything. Right now I'm set to motion keyframe so it automatically interpolated between the frames. As we can see we have a bit of movement over here. Sometimes we'll kind of notice a little bit that uh, the design itself might be a little bit off or that the movement kind of looks weird as it turns. Uh, so maybe we'll want to adjust a little bit. But again, this is stuff that uh, definitely um, you should discuss with the team before you take any uh, decisions about that yourself. Um, so for me, I think I'd rather have this eye a little bit more over here. So I'm just gonna move it slightly over to the side and it should flow into uh, the other positions much better as well. So I already have pretty much a good smooth rotating of the head. Um, now we've only done up to the quarter front so we can keep that motion if we want to just kind of see 
the entire thing here um, and keep on positioning the rest of the body as well, of course. So we're gonna stop right here for this one and I'll see you guys in the next video for posing the quarter front of the body. See you there.